Hey everyone, Rob here, and we have some updates. It's been a while, but there's been a lot of news going on about some volcanic activity that may be occurring in Askia. Now, I've talked about this before, and we've done some videos on it before, because this volcano, which is still active, uh, hasn't erupted yet, but it's still active, It's been it's been sort of doing a little bit of noise here and there for the past year, and so uh, we've been keeping an eye on it. The past month, however, has been quite a lot more activity. You can see here, this is the news from March 3rd, so just two days ago, uh, the headline is, it may erupt tomorrow, which is a, a bit of an extreme an extreme sentence, you know, one of those things that they, they do for clicks, but they're not entirely wrong, because as with many different volcanoes uh, and eruptions to be, it's very difficult to predict exactly when it's going to happen. So in this article here, they talk about uh, one of the volcano volcanologists uh, Thorvaldur Thorsson, I believe, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, uh, he believes it's likely that Askia is in the advanced process, in the advanced stages of preparing for an eruption. And he's saying that the events that have taken place over the past few weeks, which I'll get into in a moment, uh, which includes increased seismic activity and an increase in the surface water temperature, uh, you can see here, the melting there and again i'll go over some of it and he said all this fits well into the pattern that the volcano is well on its way to erupt uh, and of course he was quoted as saying it can erupt tomorrow but it can take months or even years to prepare for the eruption so headlines a little bit of a clickbait sort of thing uh, one thing is for certain though is everyone's been pointing at this saying it's going to happen it's just a matter of when and the fact that the magma has reached a shallow level, a shallower level <laughs> indicates that it's not long before it actually hits through the surface uh, and shows something that we're being able to see. So uh, earlier this week, the University of Iceland's Institute for Volcanology and Natural Hazards did report a bunch of things that we're going to look at, specifically surrounding this lake that we see here, Oskivat. Uh, and they're saying that it's steadily warming, and a large part of it now has reached temperatures above 2 degrees, which is considered quite high compared to typical winter conditions, especially where this is located in Iceland, in sort of the middle of nowhere. So we'll take a look at that. But again, Thorvald says that it's clear that the flow of hot water has increased in the Askivat uh, section here, and it means that there is geothermal heat being unleashed, and it's very likely related to the Earthquakes and the turbulence that have been there and this up uplift that we've been seeing over the past little while uh, has opened up some of those cracks and the hot water has an easier way to get up to the surface, uh, which is causing this sort of melting of the ice and warming of the water. Now, this particular volcano, the Askia, has been preparing for an eruption since 2012. And this rise in water temperature, they're saying, is just one part of that preparation. But for now, for the first time, scientists will have the opportunity to observe the process with modern measuring tools and instruments. Uh, which is kind of crazy because, you know, it's only been, what, just over 10 years since the last eruption, or it's been pre preparing for an eruption since then, uh, and we would have thought that the uh, the tools were in place then, but technology comes a long way over a short period of time. So they're saying that it is a long process for the time that this particular volcano does its preparations before erupting. Uh, everything's been going on. Again, as I said, I did a lot of videos last year on this, so all of this preparation has been especially uh, more frequent in the last year. The uplift, increase in temperature, and, and things like that. So we're going to take a look at that right now. But he did say uh, it will still take some time. There may be an event or two that accelerates it. And maybe it'll start quickly, but maybe it won't. Who knows? So that's just uh, something on MBF, uh, one of the news articles there. Let's just go into exactly where we're talking so here's Askiva. So we're going to talk a lot about this right here. And Askiva is there. So this is the area. And if we zoom out, you can see exactly where it is in relation to everything in Iceland. So here's all of Iceland. Reykjavik here is down in this corner. And then, of course, in the middle of nowhere. So there's not really a big threat to people for this to, in, to erupt. Uh, there may be ash cloud and things like that. But it is quite far from where people typically live. And it's in what we would say is the highlands behind the Vatnajökull Glacier. So we can see that, and if we go to a satellite view, you kind of get this nice this nice view of the lake that's there as a result of the eruption. But again, definitely not really around any people, which is always a good thing uh, to, to keep in mind. So let's start looking at some of these images that we're seeing, and uh, I'll see if I can zoom in here for you, just because some of these are a bit small. And most of these, if not all, 
are coming from the University of Iceland uh, and their Facebook page on volcanology. So this is really great information that they have uh, produced. So this first one here is part of their analysis from the Landsat 89 image from NASA and the observation date is the 25th of January of 2023. And there you can see here that the opening in the ice is small compared in comparison to some of the previous uh, observations that they had, but they can conclude that the geothermal input has taken place between the 25th of January and the 8th of February, and they are, of course, continuing to monitor that. So then we jump into another picture here, again, zooming in, and we get uh, on these ones here, Lake Askia, uh, or Oskiva, as we can see here, uh, all the, the titles there. They're saying that it came into view, and so it's, we're able to actually see the water on this because of the melting in the ice. Uh, came into view on, on the Friday and the Saturday of early mid February. And so the area of the melted ice was about 205 hectares. And uh, there's these four images showing from the 25th of January to the 11th of February. So we can see here the earliest 25th here, and then February 8th, also the top right, February 10th, and then February 11th. So we can see sort of the progression of the melt because of this. Uh, it's very interesting to see how quickly this, this is melting. Then we come into the next picture that they have here and just zoom in. Uh, this one again is from uh, an image from the ESA Sentinel-2. And so from this image, we can see the ice-free area is now uh, 487 hectares. So we can see here this patch to the right and to the left, and you can see it's sort of breaking off a little bit there. So it's continuous ice is observed in the northeast corner of the lake, uh, but a large part of the lake is now covered with floating loose ice, which you can see here is the broken spot that separates the two uh, ice free areas from the left and the right. The next image we have is from uh, the Sentinel 2. Again, it's a little bit cloudy, but we can see the ice free area is continuing to grow. And we can see here in the bottom left and then a little bit here on the bottom right, which is sort of behind these clouds. Uh, there are some icebergs, you know, floating, but uh, you can see here there's just sort of a chunk and it's, it's preparing to uh, melt. And say melting is fast, but it has slowed in comparison to the earlier observations from this point, which was uh, on February 15th. However, they expect that uh, this, this section here on the top right, this ice curl, as they say, they expect that to melt uh, considerably fast because it's a you know there's a lot of a uh, open water around it and the warm water of course uh, so they're also saying that another interesting observation they had is that the snow is starting to melt in the eastern mountain slopes adjacent to the lake so they're keeping an eye on that as well then we move on to a series two pictures here uh, and this is from february 16th uh, and it said the TFSIF Icelandic Coast Guard aircraft flew over Asuka in the surrounding area uh, and the indications of the flight were that there was increased activity in the area which they're interpreting as land elevation changes in the recent months, seismic activity, rapid changes over the ice cover of Lake Oskuvat since the beginning of February uh, 2023. And so all of all this was observed and the flight included experts from the University of Iceland the Icelandic Meteorological Office, and Stjotnad Otna, whose fields of expertise include volcanology, crustal movements, landscaping, meteorology, remote sensing, high-tech engineering. You know, it's a huge number of really smart people going over in this aircraft. And the goal of their research uh, mission on, on the aircraft was to investigate the situation, assess the changes, what the extent was, do some scientific mapping, uh, and ex install temperature sensors in Lake Ostivat. So the Coast Guard, they, the experts there, took care of all the mapping with, with side radar, light, thermal, thermal cameras, and the pirates successfully maneuvered the plane around the area. And at the end of all of this, a door at the back of the machine, uh, the plane was opened. Oskivat was measured with a handheld thermal camera and temperature sensors with attached buoys, uh, which were released into the water. And it's hoped that the meters and all these measuring tools will measure the water temperature at one meter five meter and 20 meter depths in the next coming weeks. So it's really exciting that they were able to, to put this all together because this is the crucial information. So the data is gonna be processed and the most active areas are being scrutinized. Uh, most of it occurs in known geothermal areas in the west of Oskivat, 
of course. Uh, during the flight, a dense formation of steam was observed over part of the geothermal area, and plumes of steam extended well out onto the water. So, super interesting here. Let's just jump to the next picture here as we're talking about this. So, the eastern part of the lake, again, covered with uh, icebergs and, and pieces of ice, small glaciers that seem to have broken up due to the wind and waves rather than direct melting, is what they're saying. And it seems likely to them that an increase in the activity of the geothermal areas uh, in the western part of the lake and the corresponding melting of the ice cover there caused the melting process to begin, but as a result, the vertical mixing of the water calm, weather, winds, all this stuff, caused the ice to disappear from the large part of the lake uh, and break it up. So during the flight, it became clear how important the TFSIF is, which is the Coast Guard, Planes for research and monitoring of the country's natural environment. And you can see here all of the information that they're able to both find and the instruments that they were able to get into the water and, and being able to map this stuff. So it, it was really, really quite, quite ast astonishing that they were able to put all this together and work with all of the different people to, to get, things, uh, get things moving here. So then we get into some very cool images. So there's a series of images and a video, which I'll show you. Uh, and these are all from around March 1st. And they, again, all of these scientists and experts have been watching like Oskuvath for the last few weeks, uh, all through February, especially. In particular, they're looking at the temperature patterns at the water surface along the margins of Oskuvath, where there's the greatest thermal upwelling. So in late February, uh, again, they, joined the crew of the Coast Guard helicopter on the training flight and did all of the instruments and put all the instruments there. But they were saying here that an FLIR, thermal camera, was part of that kit, as we mentioned, uh, and it was being calibrated for precise measurements in the field. But during the processing of all this, it became clear, as you can see here in this thermal camera image, uh, that the thermal upwelling is the greatest at... Um, I'm going to say if I can pronounce this, Mi Vetingrun, where it <laughs> cascades into the Caldra Lake, uh, temperatures over 28 degrees Celsius were measured, where the lava meets the Caldra Falls. So there's a couple of pictures here I'm going to go through. And uh, several thermal plumes extended into the lake. So the planes did all this. We can just go to the next one. This is another. We can see here, looking at all, we can see the ice free area which is on the left this sort of dark area and then this broken area and this is from february 20th from the sentinel 2 which is part of the nasa uh, group they are saying that the uh, land sat which is from nasa is passing over this area regularly and on monday the 27th of february the conditions were particularly good and so temp temperature analysis from that monday uh, february 27th uh, was presented in figure three, which is right here. We can see that. Uh, it clearly shows that the water is heating up steadily, and from this analysis, they could see that a large part of the surface water is above two degrees Celsius, which is considered quite high, again, in the middle of winter, and that the principal heat flux emanates from the sides where Mi Vetingarash lava meets the Oskar Klaidra faults, which is considered, which is consistent with the measurements made during the flight by by the, uh, the Coast Guard helicopter on February 20th. So there's so many moving parts and so many measurements, so many people keeping an eye on this. Uh, there's just a ton of information sort of throwing at you all at once. But all of this analysis supports the fact that the geothermal flux has increased significantly in and around Oskuvat, which is this lake, once again, in and during February 2023, and is most likely producing the observed ice melting. So what we have last but not least for the pictures, we can see here the uh, picture of the lake on the last day of February, so February 28th, just a couple days ago. And if we're looking, if we kind of go back from this picture to this one, so we see just over a month, so it's January 25th to February 28th, we can see huge, I mean, it's just basically completely melted at this point in time. Uh, and then one thing is, I'll play this as we're sort of wrapping all this up. This is the video of the thermal camera that they had on that flight of this lake and of this area. And you can see 
quite clearly. And again, on the right hand side, you can see the temperature sort of mapping the temperature legend of this. You can see the, the intense temperatures that they have uh, at certain points coming into the lake and melting that uh, melting that ice. So it's it's quite it's quite intense. The uh, the things that are going on there in Iceland. Again, not to worry. It's in the middle of nowhere, but definitely this is a big update. There's a lot of information we covered. If you're into volcanoes and eruptions and you want to, uh, you know, subscribe, get more information as this occurs, feel free to do that. For those of you that are looking to come to Iceland to see a volcano, uh, when this does erupt, and it's not, it's, it's not if, it's more of a when at this point, when it does erupt, I am sure that there will be helicopter tours some way for you to get there. Not quite as easy as the last eruption that occurred in uh, Gellingadalur or Fadlusfet. But definitely, uh, if you want to see an eruption in your lifetime when this erupts, and it's safe to do so, I'm sure they will organize something for all of you. So, we will keep an update on this. As I said, it's a lot's happening, so next update might come tomorrow, might come later today, who knows. I will be sure to keep an eye on this and let you know when something new happens that uh, that's happening in Aska or Oskivat. So, until next time, thank you so much for watching. And I look forward to the next update.